Community Television presents Bella Vista and Beyond. Today our hosts are Bambi Crozier and Tricia Ayers. And we will be talking about home inspection and what you should know about urology. And now to the studio for our program. Hi there, my name is Bambi. Thank you for joining us here at Bella Vista and Beyond. We're glad you're with us today. My guest today is Dave Faber with National Property Inspections. And we brought Dave on today. I talked a little bit, hinted about it last, last month. But it's spring and it's time to inspect our homes and make sure that everything is in good order and things aren't breaking down. And home inspectors, often we know that your realtors referred it when you bought your home. You want to have that home inspected before you buy, even if it's a, a new construction or a, a used home that you are buying. Uh, but did you know it's really important to inspect your home at least once a year just for normal maintenance items? I didn't. When I first bought my property, my very first property was back in the, the 90s, I had no idea what it meant to be a homeowner. I'm just going to tell you, Dave, it's probably one of the most embarrassing things. But I didn't realize that I needed to change the filters. I didn't realize that I needed to, to have my um, uh, electrical, electrical system or the HVAC system or even the plumbing system. I didn't know that there were wax rings that had to be replaced. <laughs> so, and these are all very common, right? To yes. you, you're like, oh, this is, this is a no brainer because I get it. Um, so today on the show, we've got Dave. We're going to ask him lots of questions and then we're going to give you an opportunity to be able to reach out to him with any questions that you may have. So Great. welcome, Dave. Thank well, you thank for you joining us today. I appreciate yes. the opportunity. So tell me, tell me a little bit about National Property Inspections. Tell me a little about yourself, your experience with them, and um, then I would love to get into this. Yeah, for sure. So uh, my name is Dave Faber with National Property Inspections. Uh, National Property Inspections is one of the largest and oldest home inspection uh, franchises in the country. Mm -hmm. And I was very grateful and lucky to be able to get the franchise down here after a guy that's had it for like 10 years nice. retired and I took it over. So I've been doing this for just about two years now. This is mm -hmm. my retirement career, very and good. I just love doing this. I'm really passionate about what you're talking about, just help people understand a little bit more about their home and I'm so grateful for the opportunity to talk about this maintenance portion mm -hmm. because it's something that not everybody thinks about like you said they right. usually do it when they're gonna sell or buy a home mm -hmm. but don't think about it in between and that really let segues into the great question about why why is it so important to yes. do these maintenance home inspections and really there's three reasons the first one is really about protecting your investment mm -hmm. uh, it's probably one of for most people one of the biggest investments they're going to make is their home mm -hmm. and being able to maintain it and keep up up on it is just a good way to protect your investments and it segues into the second thing which is it's expensive to own a home it and is. some home repairs can be very expensive and by mm -hmm. spending a little bit money during the years and maintaining basic things you can avoid those big expenses down the road mm -hmm. and then the third reason is right now it's a seller's market but at some point it could turn into a buyer's market and having your home in real good sellable shape is just a really big advantage to be able to get full market price out of your home it totally is and I'll tell you what made me think we need to have this on Bella Vista uh, TV is that we hosted a training uh, and home inspection training company uh, to come and do a home inspection of our home so I had I don't know 20 25 uh, home inspectors who were just <laughs> graduating this class that walked through my home and I thought no big deal right my home is in great we've had it for I think we closed in 2012 so we had it for eight or nine years there's nothing wrong with my home uh, and I got a list a mile long. I had actual burn marks in my electrical panel. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I've been living here. We could have had a fire. Yeah, and not many people are going to take time to check their electrical panel. No, right. I, like I never. Yeah. So, and I thought, well, how often should I do this? And, and what do I not know? You know, how can, and I learned things about dryer vents that I needed to do that I had heard before and I've heard about house fires and things. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more yeah. about what you do and, and some of these tools I see you've brought in. Yeah. So tell me a so, little more. So this uh, is kind of a brochure that I offer to employees. And if anybody's interested in getting this, you know, please reach out either by text or email and I'll send you a copy of this for free. But it's basically just a list. Mm -hmm. It kind of divided into four areas. There's monthly maintenance type things. Mm -hmm. There's annual maintenance. And then there's mm -hmm. a couple things to do in the spring and then in the fall to make sure that you're staying. And these are easy things to do. Now, there's some things like getting up on your roof or getting to your crawl space that you may want to have me do. Mm -hmm. But I tell people, if you're doing this on an annual basis, then have 
having me come like every other year mm -hmm. to these other things is just a really good habit to get into. Okay. So I'd be happy to send this so you've got a list of all these things that you need to go through. But I would like to highlight a couple of yeah. the big things that are big for everybody. So uh, in the inspection business, we talk a lot about the worst enemy to your house is water. Mm -hmm. uh, water inside the house is just not a good thing. So one of the biggest things and easiest things for you to do is maintain your gutters and your mm -hmm. downspouts. Mm -hmm. uh, and that includes cleaning the gutters. And even though you've got leaf guards on top of them, those do need to be cleaned because a lot of mm -hmm. broad leaf trees brought those okay. leaves on there and they stay over there and water runs over. So getting those taken care of, making sure that your downspouts don't have leaks and the gutters don't have leaks. And then also it's a big thing just to have extensions at the bottom of your downspouts to ensure that the water is being taken for as far away as possible from the foundation so that you don't have, you know, foundational problems or settling, unnecessary settling in the house. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Well, so tell me some, a little bit about these tools. What have you got over here? Um, so these are kind of things, since moisture is one of the biggest things, this is one of my key tools which is just a moisture meter and uh, because we do what's called a visual non-invasive inspection mm -hmm. this I don't have to there's an old style one you had to poke holes in the wall to get it and this just uses the surface to determine if there's moisture it's very difficult sometimes on a painted sheetrock wall to see whether there's moisture in there but putting this against the wall you can yeah. see about two inches deep and you'll be able to detect moisture mm -hmm. but then there's also because we're visual and mm -hmm. do visual inspections I can't see things uh, as well with my visual as I can with my thermal imaging. So I incorporated this about a year ago. I bought and got certified to do thermal imaging and this allows me to see back behind the walls. And so if I suspect any water intrusion in the ceiling or wall, I can use this and this tool to both help me out to okay. figure that out. There and then my last tool is my drone. I do use the drone to do house uh, the roof inspections. Mm -hmm. uh, and if at all possible, I'll always get on your roof. And that's a good question to ask your inspectors that you hire is how they're going to do the roofs because if you can get up on the roof, there's nothing like that. But a great secondary thing is using this drone, which allows me to get up. The camera's incredible on this. The zoom ability is great. And being able to see things close, I'll be able to get a lot of you know pictures and be able to see a lot from the top of the roof with that. That's really important. I, I remember them talking when they came to the house, all these home inspectors, and they were talking about um, the legalities of them getting on the roof and the potential for hurt. Um, and many people were talking that they weren't going to do roofs as part of their inspections because they didn't feel that it was safe. That's such a great point. If you look in Bella, Bella Vista, Bentonville, some of these homes, the, the pitch is really high. Yeah. Uh, and I don't even know how they would get up there. So this is a great ad yeah. to be able to inspect those. Yeah. That's phenomenal. The pitches are designed that way because we have so much hail. Mm -hmm. The steeper the pitch on the house, the less damage that a hail is going to have on it. So mm -hmm. it's very common. And uh, like I say, if I can get up on a roof, I will. If it's safe to get on and off right. and if I can walk it. But this is just a great tool to be able to get to those steep ones and still be able to see a lot. Right, absolutely. Yeah. So when you are doing these inspections, what are some of the top things that you are finding that people aren't aware of? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so the drainage is probably that biggest thing, keeping that water away from the house, but also just looking around the siding of your house and looking at the exterior, any protrusions or any entries into the house, like your AC lines or your gas lines, they'll generally a good contractor will, you know, caulk and seal around those, mm -hmm. but the sealants wear. Mm -hmm. and they get old, they get cracked, and wherever there's crack, you have a choice of your chance of moisture getting in there, but you also have pest and insect intrusion, which can really be harmful to your house. So making sure that you walk around your house and making sure that all those protrusions in good shape really applies to windows and doors, making sure that your windows and doors are sealed. And one of the cheap, inexpensive ones is the, therm the weather stripping on your doors, mm -hmm. both your garage door and all external doors. Like once a year, just opening your doors, checking that, you know, that weather stripping to make sure it's in good shape. It's very easy to replace. Mm -hmm. uh, most people can do that on our own if it's damaged. But yeah, those are some of the big things. Yeah. yeah. When I was on your Facebook page, you did a video that I thought was so cool. Tell me a little about that series. Yeah. So it's called, What is That Dang Darn Deal? Mm -hmm. And it's a series I'm putting together. And it's really designed, uh, one of the things I really like about my job, I love doing the inspections, but I love to educate. Mm -hmm. And it's a really good opportunity to teach people about their house. And there's so many things around the exterior of your house that we don't know about. The one you saw was talking about weep holes. We have mm -hmm. a lot of brick veneer homes in this mm -hmm. area, and brick is a brick veneer is a gap between the wood framing of the house, and that gap can sometimes get moisture in it, and the weeping holes and the weeping wicks are ways of getting that moisture out. So just explaining those types of things, like what are all the vents on top of my roof, you know, mm -hmm. what's a plumbing vent versus a, a hot water heater and gas furnaces, and just 
you know, static vents for air circulation, through mm -hmm. just understanding what all those items are. Which is phenomenal. Uh, we just bought a duplex a couple of months ago, and when we purchased it, we didn't realize all of the issues that we were going to have. Uh, and, and I learned so much about the different venting systems. I had no idea between plumbing, between the heating, between the stove, having it. It was crazy. So I, that, was, that was great information. Tell me a little bit more about, um, you have an event coming up with the Women's Expo? Yeah, so I'm, I have a booth at the Women's Expo this year, and please come visit me if you get a chance. It's on April 24th and 25th down in Springdale. And um, it's just an opportunity for me to visit with homeowners and talk about these maintenance types things and how mm -hmm. I can help you to give you this checklist so that you can go through things, how you can understand things a little bit more. And if you need my help to be able to get up on the roof and look at things or to check out your HVAC system and make sure everything's operating great, you know, we can schedule some time to do that and I'd be happy to help with that kind of stuff. So it's a really fun event. Awesome. Yeah. And then I, I'd heard you speaking a little bit with Tricia right before the show about, she had asked a question about how often does my furnace, my furnace has a filter and she was surprised <laughs> to hear that. Um, are there any other things that people need to change like on a monthly basis? That's a great question. I think the two things that I would probably encourage everybody to do is one, make sure that you're changing your filters in your furnaces at least two months. And there's several services like filterby.com is a service that will deliver them to your house. Nice. You know, so you can set it up and you don't have to worry about it. But that's probably the most important thing you can do to keep that whole HVAC system working in great shape. The other one is your dryer vents. Uh, noticing where your dryer vent is that comes out. Sometimes in this area they're up on the roof. Mm -hmm. And making sure that you can visually see those and get the lint out of there, that can be a pretty big safety or fire hazard. So mm -hmm. those are the two things that I tell everybody. But there's also simple things like, um, you know, your air conditioning unit. Uh, mm -hmm. They sit outside and you're like, this is a great time of the year to do this. To just turn off the power, there's usually an electric disconnect uh, that's there. You just pull that out and be able to get to it. And then you can take a hose and just clean off those fins mm -hmm. all the way around the and clean out debris and leaves and anything growing into it. Uh, that can save so much energy and makes your air conditioning system work that much more efficiently. Absolutely. So if people want to reach out to you, because you've given a lot of information, and a lot of times I may, I may hear it, but to actually put it into action, I'm probably not going to feel as confident myself. So I would probably want to reach out to an expert. How would we be able to reach out to you? How can our, our viewers see you? Yeah. Uh Text and email is my favorite way. I do answer my phone individually. I don't have an answering service, so my number will be up on the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, you can text me or call, uh, but I also have a website. It's actually at uh, like npiweb.com slash nwa, and I have all kinds of things that are helpful hints mm -hmm. for people, and some of these things are available, and you can clearly email me from there to get copies. I'd be happy to mail out any of these brochures to anybody that's interested. Perfect. So reach you via your phone number, and tell me your phone number. It's area code 479-777-1007. <laughs> Fantastic. Your website, nwiinspect.com forward slash NWA. Yep. And NPI, you can, NPI. NPI. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep, yep. NPIinspect.com forward slash NWA. And then you also have a Facebook page so they can just search for NPI NWA and yes, they'll find you there. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you for coming on today. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Thank I you for letting me share that. some time with you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then for our viewers, I just want to remind you guys we are a um, nonprofit. We, we do not, we're not funded by anyone other than you guys. So to help us, please consider sending the word donate to 479-269-9496. This would greatly help us to keep bringing you great quality community TV. And if you'll hold with us, we'll be right back with Miss Tricia and her guest. Stay tuned. We will be right back. We did great. Awesome. Welcome back. Here is our host, Tricia. Well, welcome back, and uh, thanks to Bambi and her guest. I have my home maintenance guide, so I'm going to go home and do all the, the checking. I don't think I'm going to get up on the roof, though. That's the thing. Yes, I'll leave some of those and, and maybe have to call the professional for that. Well, talking about professionals, moving on to my portion of our show today, and my guest is Dr. Adam Childs. And he is a doctor with Arkansas Urology. So, uh, Dr. Childs, welcome. Thank you, Trisha. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad I was actually able to say urology without making a mess. 
It's, okay. it's definitely something that uh, makes people uncomfortable sometimes. It does, it does. We were talking a little bit earlier that this is kind of out of my comfort zone, so I'm so glad that you came today. Um, Arkansas Urology, I was looking on the website, many offices in the Arkansas area, but the offices here are relatively new. Yeah, so I've, I've been in Northwest Arkansas since about 2012 and, and joined Arkansas Urology about two years ago. So uh, it's a new name in the area. It's a, a great group of uh, physicians who specialize in just urology, and they uh, have offices across the state. They're the, the largest urology group in the state and, and really the, uh, the standard in the state of Arkansas for urology. So it's been a, a great uh, thing to be able to join with them to bring a higher level of urology care to this growing area. And you are originally from Houston? Yes, I grew up in Houston, Texas, and uh, uh, spent a lot of time there. Moved to southern Minnesota for urology training for five years. Thought we'd end up in, in Texas, because that's where my wife is also from. But stumbled across northwest Arkansas trying to get home, and we've never, uh, never wanted to leave. So this is probably the longest place we've uh, ever lived with our kids. Um, been here since 2012, and I've loved to have loved it here, have loved to see the area grow and, and change and have enjoyed the beauty and the people and uh, really call this home and plan to stay forever. Well, good. We're so glad to have you. And we know that COVID kind of hit for everybody and that put a hiccup in everybody's practice. Absolutely. But you were saying earlier that um, there was no gap in the care that you were giving at the... Yeah, I was going to say we... Um, you know, we opened about two years ago, summer 2019, before Corona was on, on anybody's radar. And, uh, you know, certainly it was a process to open a practice, and we kind of go through different phases every quarter, every six months. But, you know, as we're kind of ramping up and bringing in another, another doc for the growth, we, you know, all experienced coronavirus and uh, had to figure out how to, how to get through that and still offer the services that our, our patients need. Um, so we, we did very well in terms of, of pivoting to that. I mean, avoiding the things that could be avoided, offering telemedicine for things we could do telemedicine for, which we still do, um, and trying to, to still deliver the care that needed to be done in a timely manner and, and hold off on things that could maybe wait a little bit. But certainly as we've gone through coronavirus in these different phases, we're kind of entering this, this new phase where things are opening up a little bit and more people are getting vaccinated and we're certainly seeing you know, people come back to get, you know, some of this health care they feel like they could have, you know, that they wanted to wait on. So uh, it's definitely been exciting to see the growth and, and uh, to be able to, to step up and meet that demand that this area has. Now, urology, what does that encompass? Because it's a lot more than I thought it was. Yeah, well, we were talking earlier. I, I don't think I knew what urology was when I went to med school. I, I consider myself fortunate to have, have found it. It's something I remain very, very passionate about. But essentially, urology is the specialty of the uh, urinary system. So you could think male reproductive system, prostate, uh, male and female bladder issues, all the cancers of the urinary system, and, and even a few things kind of in the vicinity. But um, we're a surgical subspecialty, but part of what really drew me to urology is we're more than just surgeons. We're really kind of the medical specialists of most of these areas. So a lot of what we do is, is medical-based. Certainly a lot of what we do is, is surgical-based, and just that variety for me was something I found very enjoyable to be able to have kind of a long-term relationship with our patients who needed kind of long-term management, but also to be able to, to fix things for good with different procedures or surgeries that we offer where, where people could, you know, leave us and go on with their lives and, and do well. So um, it's definitely something that, that is a great field and, and turns out pretty competitive field to get into, meaning as med, school, med students go through med school and uh, find different things. It has a, a lot of appeal for a lot of different reasons, but those are some of the some of the reasons that really drew me drew me to it. So for anybody who's sitting at home, male or female, it's not something that people talk about a lot. But what are some of the warning signs for people at home maybe who are not comfortable talking about any of this that that, that this is their this is their cue to seek out referral treatment or just a checkup? Yeah, well, there, there's a lot of things that come to mind. I, you know, my practice is a little bit more oncology based. So I'd say one of the, one of the big things that, that I would tell patients is look, if, you know, listen to your body. If, if things are changing, if, if there's a new way that you're paying, you know, talk to your doctor about it. A lot of times it can be something minor. It can just be simple UTI or age related bladder issues. But 
One big thing I see kind of get ignored and missed sometimes is blood in the urine. If you're seeing blood in the urine, that's not good, and you right. need to tell your doc. And I still see some sometimes it just not be evaluated quickly, and it can turn out to be some pretty bad things. So blood in the urine gets my attention, you know, kind of an acute change in baseline from <clears throat> from urinary symptoms gets my attention. So we see we see a lot of men with prostate problems and prostate cancer, and no doubt a lot of guys having problems paying in our clinic you know, have basic issues like enlarged prostate that's that's not, you know, a necessarily a life-threatening issue for most of them, but it's a big quality of life issue. But if guys go from whatever normal is to something that's really worsening over a few months, well, we've got to be, you know, looking for some bad things like prostate cancer, which unfortunately don't uh, give you a lot of symptoms until it's more advanced. So there's there's a lot of things like that. And as we, as we talk about corona, it's certainly, you know, concerning to us as docs, kind of the delay in care we've been seeing. Uh, there's been a lot of decrease in cancer diagnoses, and we're starting to see increase. I guess we're starting to see more advanced disease states in some of the things that we see, and I think we're going to be seeing that for a few years as, as people have avoided doctors, avoided going out, avoided you know getting their checkups and things like that, where some of these things would otherwise be, uh, be caught earlier. Um, I know there is a foundation um, that offers free Free clinics, free checkups? Yeah, so our Arkansas Urology has been a phenomenal group to, to work with. I was previously hospital employed, but it's, it's great to work with a group of specialists who are 100% focused on delivering the best urologic care. And they've got a nonprofit foundation called the Arkansas Urology Foundation that, that uh, fundraises across the state and, and takes funds from you know, different donors to promote health in the state of Arkansas. And this isn't just in Little Rock, but it's all over the state. They they meet and, and work with Rotary Clubs and, and other service-oriented uh, organizations, but they uh, collect funds to, to fund a lot of, of uh, you know, good projects. And what you're referring to there is, is I think, what they call the, uh, it's a men's health initiative, but as, as the ladies all listening know, your men probably don't like going to the doctor. It's like pulling teeth. Uh, I, you know, I think male doctors are real bad too. We don't like going to the doctor, so nobody likes it. And so a lot of times, men are able to uh, wiggle out of that uh, if they're if if no one's twisting their elbow real hard. And so they won't just go to the doctor until they're really having some issues. And there's just a lot of health issues that are going to be neglected and missed until you're having more advanced, really bothersome symptoms. Uh, and a lot of these are, have nothing to do with urology. So part of this program was to develop an easy, uh, non-threatening way for men to get. Uh, a checkup. It's like taking your car to, to get a quick check. They do a you know, 20, 40 point check. That's kind of what we're doing with just a blood test. So uh, the Arkansas Urology Foundation pays for the blood work with donated funds. You get, uh, you, know, you get your blood checked, you get some basic vitals. You don't have to see a doctor. You just come in whenever you can come in and you'll get the test results by mail with some general recommendations. And, and some of that might be, hey, your cholesterol's kind of high, let's get you a general doc. Or uh, your blood sugar's you know, not appropriate and you might have diabetes, let's have you see a general doc. But there's also some urology things we check, things like testosterone and uh, PSA, which is used to screen for, uh, for prostate cancer. So uh, there's a, a, a lot of different disease states that doctors can identify just from, just from blood work alone that have nothing to do with a physical examination. So by being able to just get that quick blood test, guys can get some form of health care in a less intimidating way that hopefully will open the door to addressing some really concerning things like diabetes or high blood pressure or high cholesterol, things that lead to um, the leading you know, causes of death in men, things like heart disease and diabetic complications and things like that. So uh, it's a program that's been in place across the state that we're kind of launching in this area. It's been very well received in other communities and has been a, a good service to the, the men in Arkansas. There's just no excuse not to get it done. We try to make it as easy as possible. I would definitely say it's a lot easier to, to swing by and just have your blood drawn and, and take off and get the results later and, and you know hopefully do something about it if there's some abnormalities versus you know the just the intimidation of having to go see the doctor and knowing there's some sort of exam that's going to happen and, and things like that. Absolutely. Yes, that's a challenge. That's a challenge for all of the men out there. This is easy. Get it done. Ladies, support your gentlemen and make them go and get that done. I'm going to I'm going to my husband probably isn't watching this right now, but he's going. So thank you so much. You're welcome. So um, the website is www.arkansasurology.com. 
So you can go on there, there it is on the screen, and you can find all kinds of information of all the services offered. There's also a blog, and I think there's some videos. It's a very comprehensive website. Um, not a scary thing. Ladies and gentlemen need to go out there and get that stuff done, everybody. Everybody needs to get that stuff done. Is there anything that I haven't asked you that you, that you need to say, do you think? No, I mean, you, you get me talking about urology, I'll, I'll keep rambling for a while. Right. It's just something I'm passionate about. But I would say that, that a lot of what we do, you know, a lot of the things we take care of are certainly life and death, but a lot of them are quality of life. And so um, one of the things I just love about urology is, is, is urologists, we're just able to do a lot of good for people, just improve the quality of life, whether it's sexual health related, like erectile dysfunction, low testosterone, uh, voiding problems in men. There's uh, so many different options out there for enlarged prostate now from literally six different groups of medicines. And, and I'm not a big medicine fan. We've got a lot of minimally invasive uh, treatment options that can, can fix things and get guys off medicines. And we've got all the traditional things guys have heard of. But uh, when it comes to enlarged prostate and a lot of the other urology health issues we deal with, there's typically not a one-size-fits-all sort of solution. There's there's a lot of different things we can offer depending on what the patient's goals are. Certainly there's medicines that work very well that people can take for life, but we've got some very simple things that can get people fixed and get them to a better quality of life than they had on medicines and get them off of medicine. And my patients will often hear me say, it's, you know, it's not often your doctor can get you off of medicine. Right. Uh, we can really do that for a lot of the different things that we deal with. And so um, I think as people get older, that becomes a bigger and bigger thing because you just, as you get more medicines as you get older, they just cause different interactions and more issues than they did when you were younger. So it's a, it's a, it's a good thing. There's a lot of good urologists in this area who, who can uh, offer a lot of improvement in quality of life. So. Thank you. Thank you so much you for bet. taking time out of your practice today. Thank you to, to Dr. Childs there. I'm going to put my glasses on now because I need that. A couple of announcements. Obviously, we would like you to donate. So text the word four, to 479-269-9496, the word donate. And I'm sure that's up on the screen. Very important. We want to keep this programming going. Um, it's, it's a staple in the community, and we have such rich programming to give everybody. So if you text and you'd like to donate, that's your option to do that. Um, and also, one more announcement before we go. Um, we have a big brother, big sister of Northwest Arkansas program going, and we are looking for men. Why, we're looking for a lot of men, it seems, in this segment, um, to be volunteer mentors. We actually have... Um, an 11-year-old young man who has waited nearly six months in this program to find a mentor. So if you are maybe retired out there or have some extra time on your hands, this is a wonderful, wonderful program, and you should step up. It's very good to help in your community in any way that you can. Um, and Jennifer is the contact person with Big Brothers Big Sisters, and her office number is 479 966 Four three six six, okay, and that's Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Northwest Arkansas. You can go on and Google that, find that information. Very wonderful program. Thank you for joining us today. I think it's been a wide array of information, and we will uh, see you next time. Bye bye. Remember, you can see this program on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at various times. You may also view this program on YouTube.com by going to Bella Vista TV. This has been a presentation of Bella Vista Community Television. Thank you for joining us.